Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking with David. Not really, that's just, this is really David's adventures, but I thought that was cute. Uh, I want to introduce you to Samantha. This is my sourdough starter. Um, and today, uh, she's been in the fridge for two weeks, unfortunately a little longer than I, I wanted to keep her in there. But uh, I want to get some baking done. I haven't done any in a couple weeks. Um, so she needs fed before we can do any of that this weekend. So go ahead and open her up. I use one of these. Uh, I know there's an official name for this kind of glass jar, but I don't know it, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but this is the best way. <clears throat> you know, you can't leave your starter under pressure, otherwise um, it kind of just becomes a bomb. <clears throat> so these don't, you know, are not airtight without their gasket. Um, and then I put a little coffee filter over it just so nothing can get in between the little cracks um, that the glass lid makes. So. Oh yeah, nice and uh, fermenty smelling, I guess. You know, you smell the, the lactobacillus doing its job. It's kind of like a, uh, a thick like pancake batter almost is a good way to think about it. Um, like I said, the last feeding was two weeks ago or so. And then uh, it went immediately in the fridge for storage, so it's real nice still. <clears throat> First thing, obviously, we're going to discard a little bit of it, because you always, typically you always discard, sometimes, some people do half, you know, but you discard a portion of it before you feed it, um, so I just use a little measuring cup and get in there and I scoop out a little bit and then I just unfortunately there are things you can do with a discarded sourdough starter but um, I haven't bothered to do any of those things yet I did keep it for a little while and it just became a another giant jar in the fridge full of discarded starter and then eventually it you know, not being attended to, it kind of broke down and uh, became mostly alcohol on top, or whatever they, pooch is what they actually call it, when uh, your yeast starter ferments. So. So, anyway, yeah. so we'll discard some of that, and then we'll feed what's left. We've got a this kitchen scale here. I do a, uh, sorry, it's a 100% hydration starter, that's what it's been forever, this thing's been going since uh, October of last year, so and every time she gets fed, uh, she gets 100 grams of water, gotta get it just exact, okay. 99. Come on. All right, 100 grams of water. Uh, always use spring water. I don't care if it's, you know, whatever brand, but spring water. Do not use drinking water. Do not use tap water, whatever you do. Um, the chemicals and the chlorine and everything they use to treat uh, your tap water and then obviously like your filtered water or your drinking water. Um, it's not good for the yeast. It definitely uh, inhibits yeast growth. So always use spring water. So, yeah, so like I said, we just pour 100 grams of uh, water in there. And then I like to mix it in completely with the old starter that's left. That makes a, uh, almost like a thin slurry once the uh, water's all mixed in. But it does make it much easier down the road, you know, next to 
integrate the flour that goes into it. Yeah, so now you can see we got basically just like a, a slurry kind of consistency. Now, like I said, 100% uh, hydration starter, so we're going to do an equal part of uh, AP flour, you know, all-purpose flour. Got our nice canister here. AP flour. Go ahead and uh, zero our scale here. I've actually gotten pretty good at spotting how much it's going to need. Put that flour back. So like I said, we got 100 grams of AP flour. Now, flour choice is also very important. Um, you know, I only use uh, King Arthur uh, organic all-purpose flour. I think it is uh, one of the best flours out there, just uh, if you're going to buy flour from a supermarket. Obviously there are much better flours out there, but um, I don't have access to a, a flour mill <laughs> here in town to get custom blends of flour or anything. So for the home baker um, like myself, your King Arthur is really the best. So there's our flour mixture, and then we'll just go ahead and stir this in to incorporate the flour really well. You want to make sure this is very, very, very well mixed up. You don't want any clumps of flour hanging around in there. You want it all hydrated, all mixed in. <clears throat> I, I kind of religiously scrape down the sides of the bowl, or the, I'm sorry, the jar, to make sure it's nice and clean. And then I always uh, scrape down my paddle, because I like to make sure I get every drop. And then there's always some, you know, some dry flour left on the paddle um, underneath what you're mixing. So I make sure I get that off. And, Make sure that gets incorporated too. We'll go back and mix in some more. It's probably about time I uh, dump this into a secondary container and then really clean the, the jar out. It's getting plenty of old starter stuck on the side of it now. It's about probably about time. Maybe. Before the next feeding, I'll do that. So I'll we'll scrape that down, make sure we get every last uh, ounce of good, fresh starter. Okay. Clean that up in a second. All right, so I always like to uh, wipe down the inside a little bit too. Extra starter hanging out <clears throat> on the glass and then on the seal because it'll stick to the coffee filter that I put in there. All right, so now we have a freshly fed starter. Um, and like I said, she just came out of the fridge, so it's not going to rise um, immediately. By tomorrow morning, uh, it'll get set on top of the refrigerator overnight. And by the morning, it'll probably be, uh, I would say here, you know, 
doubled, sometimes tripled in size. I'm using a fresh coffee filter here. Kind of use that to make sure we got the, the size just right. <clears throat> Clip the ring back on. The lid back in. And there we have it. Nice sourdough starter. Um, I use a rubber band around the jar itself just to kind of mark, you know, where the starter started at. And then it gives me an idea, you know, when I'm watching it rise, when it gets to its its peak, you know, that's when you want to use it. So before you're going to bake, you know, sourdough especially, you uh, you feed it the night before, you usually around 12 hours or so prior to baking, 8 to 12, something like that. <clears throat> but you want it to have risen freshly the night before. And then the next morning, you use a portion of it to make your uh, levin to start your sourdough, and then that has to sit and rise on its own, and then that makes your get your sourdough going. So there we go. There's Samantha. She's all fed. She's gonna sit up here on top of the refrigerator. Come back tomorrow. Like I said, it'll probably be you know at least halfway up here tomorrow. So <clears throat> anyway. That's uh, my first kind of baking tutorial video. So uh, I'll probably check back in tomorrow before I publish the video and show you the, uh, the result of the feeding and see uh, where it ended up. Um, all right, thanks guys for watching. Um, like and subscribe if you want, I don't care. Uh, but it does help me and uh, obviously, you know, helps me get out there and make more videos for you. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. Just a quick update before I go to bed. Uh, you know, I did the starter, or I fed the starter uh, at about 10.30 or so. It's about 1 now, so it's just about bedtime, but I wanted to show you. It has already risen, it almost doubled in size so far, um, you know, 3 hours-ish. So um, I imagine in the morning it'll have come up to roughly here. And then by the time I get out of bed, it'll have already started to come back down again. But it'll be good to go. Um, and I can either feed it again tomorrow or uh, go ahead and make some bread dough tomorrow. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> Do uh, <laughs> ignore, yes, I have kitchen magnet or uh, letter magnets all over my refrigerator. Because, you know, why not? It's my message every day. I only eat healthy food. And then I, I put my weight up there so I can hate myself a little bit every day. <laughs> uh, it's just a constant reminder, you know. Eat uh, eat only good stuff and make that number as low as I can every day. So, all right, guys. Have a good night. Talk to you in the morning. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> I, uh, I actually overslept, but uh, it's now 10... 18 so uh, it's been about 12 hours since I fed the starter let's see there's the full result you can see it's we started here during the night she climbed up to here which is uh, just a little over doubled in size um, and then now it's back down to here it'll probably if I left it alone for two or three days, it would fall back to its original starting point. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, you would either make bread with it, you know, today, or you would just discard a little more, feed it again, let it keep growing. <clears throat> um, my starter is very active. Uh, after one or two feedings, uh, it'll almost triple in size inside of three or four hours. So. Um, all right, well, I'm going to uh, put the coffee pot on and uh, probably put this video together and upload it. So, uh, like I said yesterday, um, I don't know why I said it because it wasn't the end of the video yet. But, you know, if you want to like and subscribe to the channel, that's good. Um, comments are always welcome. If you've got 
baking tips you want to share or, or questions you want answered, please let me know. I'll be happy to do it. Like I said, I've been uh, knee deep in uh, the sourdough and other other various breads probably since <laughs> the 2020 quarantine. So uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, have a good day, guys.